IoT across diverse sectors for a smarter India. The Future Connected Conclave held in New Delhi had insightful sessions on a host of subjects including smart homes, smart agriculture and mobility. There are three important trends. First is electrification. Electrification is a worldwide trend and there are countries like USA and Singapore they are already far ahead. These electrification and all that is already going on. Second one is automated cars, which also is a trend where I, uh, from the advanced driver assistance system, it is moving to totally autonomous driving. It's another trend. But today, our focus is connected mobility. And connected mobility would mean vehicle to vehicle, uh, connected uh, system, you have vehicle to infrastructure connectivity, the cloud, entertainment and other topics which I will just share with you what all it could offer. And then there are some other features which I wanted to share. Just for example, there are simple track and trace devices. This is a current scene. You can know where your vehicle is, how where it is going or is it at the same uh, route where it is prescribed or you can have a far better one which is called geofencing. What do you mean by geofencing which was used the word? which is simply that there is a route prescribed and your vehicle should be on the same route. But suppose it deviates. You do not know. Today the fleet operators tell us we are really not sure that our vehicles are going on the route where it should go or they have taken a wrong route or taken a lot of time and there is a fuel wastage. So geofencing alerts them immediately that the vehicle has deviated from the path where it was supposed to go. That is called the geofencing. Another interesting feature is stolen vehicle tracking. Here you can trace your vehicle, the location and the beauty is even after the car is switched off up to 8 hours it has the battery backup, you can still locate the car. The vehicle can have an emergency call feature, suppose there is an accident unfortunately and in the accident there is so two kinds of data could be immediately transmitted. What is the impact of the accident by the G-force? Second one is the location. Also very important, where the accident has happened. But suppose it's a small accident where is a only rear end collision, that also by impact is known and then they talk to the driver through that infotainment system. And also there is an information call. Just for example that you want to know what is the McDonald nearby or where is a nearby hotel or toilet, that also you can go, there is a concierge service. And one of the thing on the top also very interesting, I just want to take a minute that here you have a lot of apps from the smartphone which you can migrate to your infotain system on the native app. Objective today is to try and uh, figure out how the Internet of Things or connectivity through the Internet of Things will help us achieve a higher level of mobility in the automotive sector and transportation in general. So in fact, uh, Royal, I'll start with you since uh, Bosch had, has been at the forefront uh, of this technology, how can we move towards better connectivity or what we now know as hyper connectivity through the Internet of Things? What, what, what I want to know from you is what applications will we see going into the future? The Internet of Things and services, you always have to add, because at the end it's about the services and not so much about the right. hardware, is a thing that is, let's say, coming more and more into our daily business. On the mobility side, what we are speaking about is case. It's connected, it's automated, it's shared and it's electrified. But the baseline for that is connectivity. And connectivity as we experience it today in the cars is starting what everybody is now having probably in his pocket. So that's a smartphone that is getting into the car and directly being connected to your head unit. And that gives you, let's say, experiences on a still base level, like for entertainment, or for navigation. Let me take an example um, like shared mobility, yeah? so which will be uh, coming more and more into public uh, notice 
and will be part of um, fulfillment of individual mobility needs. Yeah? So for that, you have to have an ecosystem. And that is starting, of course, with the right infrastructure. Infrastructure with, uh, let's say, to anything related to telecommunication. Yeah? Uh, with, let's say, services that are available when you need it. So it means that cars that you want to take are on the place where you need it. And for that, you need parking areas, you need parking lots where you get, uh, let's say, the signal of where to get your car. So that's all just starting. So specifically to the infrastructure question, uh, are, are there any specific methods that are being deployed right now to take care of this? Now, for example, something as simple as road markings. Uh, in your research, how long do you think? Like, what is the timeline uh, by when we see maybe India's first indigenously developed car. If your question is pertaining to autonomous vehicle, uh, probably uh, autonomous vehicle will take a very long way to come uh, to India. Uh, lot of, but there could be a lot of intelligent transportation applications which will, we, can, uh, we can start taking baby steps. Already all the various regulations are mandating vehicle tracking, so we'll have the traffic information, vehicle location. Also, uh, improvement in the public transportation system, uh, efficiency improvement of public transportation system, and the uh, government is quite keen on the, uh, improving the road infrastructure. Now, the highway uh, construction is uh, um, uh, increased uh, multifold. So, we will be having very good highways. There will be a lot of infrastructure. And also, on the electric mobility side, government is quite uh, aggressive on developing the infrastructure. Uh, the biggest concern that uh, emanates from connected mobility is how do we address the cybersecurity concerns? The reason why it is a big deal and why it is a big concern is because the attack profile is increasing. Uh, we were 40 years ago trying to com protect computers from viruses and the world moved on their own from uh, making the viruses which could take out your productivity from their own when the banks got connected it became that you could take somebody's money out so you could steal money. But now what you're talking about that you could have somebody steal your life because all that which we heard from Bosch in the morning with great uh, capability also comes with a great risk saying, you know, if somebody could take control over your car, imagine not just having a situation where the Hindi Bollywood movies are all famous of having brake fail of a car. Here is somebody not letting you get out the accelerator hub. So it's, there's a lot of risk which uh, suddenly the world has moved on to. But let me tell you one thing. It is also equally easier to fix the problem because it is something where the ability to detect something on a real-time basis is very good. So those are the kind of things, if you're talking about a serious enterprise IoT implementation, go to a serious player because it's, it's a research field. It requires right. you to know. So serious player is one advice. And the second advice I will give you is that uh, know a lot more and consult a lot more before you do anything. Weak regulation has been the bane of at least the automotive sector in India. How do you think uh, either regulation can be better or better infrastructure can be provided for a smoother transition to connected mobility? I would say uh, automotive sector is quite uh, very well regulated uh, in the country uh, as compared to other sectors. Uh, there have been some fast track mechanisms. Uh, both the ministries, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and Ministry of Heavy Industry, which looks after the auto sector, those are quite active on the progress of the automotive sector and also the regulation of this sector. But uh, there is a fast track mechanism which uh, the ministry has developed, uh, which is the AISC, Automotive Industry Standards Committee, uh, which incidentally Director ARI chairs. And also there is a, a committee, uh, a standing committee, which is chaired by Joint Secretary MORTH. Uh, they they uh, make the regulations and approve the regulations and finally uh, those regulations go to the Bureau of Indian Standards and they make the Indian National Standards. But in the interim we have got fast track mechanism of developing AI standards and which the industry uh, can follow and develop their designs and models. Specifically in automobile companies, what, what kind of uh, cooperation have you seen with them, especially since they are going to be facing the tsunami of change. Uh, the level of disruption that will come through connected mobility, uh, that wave is headed towards the auto sector. Do you think the auto sector in India is prepared for that? That is a journey that has just started. Um, as I said on that case acronym, connectivity is the first thing and then all the rest is uh, kicking in. And taking connectivity again as to what does it mean for an OEM, not for a fleet manager, 
not for an individual, but for an OEM. This might open up for him completely new business models, yeah. um, like a concierge service, which, right. which is available already in, uh, for example, Europe. In Basically, OEMs. going beyond cab aggregation, the way we see it now. Absol absolutely. Uh, Tim Cook, in fact, just announced that uh, he confirmed, in fact, that they will uh, be getting into driverless car production. Are tech majors going to be the automakers of tomorrow? I think that's a question to the OEM, of course. Right. But I, I would think that uh, they will not deny that. Yeah? They will for sure say, yes, of course, um, we are the future automotive makers, but we are creating a value for the private person, for the fleet owner, far beyond the mobility experience. That, I think, would be their answer. Akhilesh, uh, Sure, so let me just answer your question on behalf of all those tech companies who I'm not supposed to speak about, but I'll take the take. Uh, I don't think that it'll be fair to say that all tech companies will become auto manufacturer, right. but I think it'll be very fair to say that every single enterprise in the future will be a technology company. On that feel-good note, uh, I would like to thank uh, our panel for joining us. It was an absolute privilege, and I hope our audience uh, enjoyed that conversation. Thank you all uh, for coming uh, out this afternoon and joining us for this discussion. Uh, have a nice day. Now the topic today is to actually understand what role technology will play in India's smart city mission. More importantly, is smart city or is a smart city about technology or is it more than that? So let's begin. Mr. Jagansha, what is the government's vision when it comes to India's smart cities? Number one, to leverage our present standing in the technological world, let us say, to put it generally. Um, and uh, certainly Digital India is, is one of the programs at the heart of the Smart City mission. The idea that you're going to have um, uh, processes like e-governance substituting for a fairly difficult to work with government system. The second is that we need to leapfrog. And smartness, the applications of technology allow us to fill gaps, to deal with procedural process kinds of um, uh, inertia or, or friction uh, in a more effective way than any kind of analog or linear process could possibly uh, deliver to us. Thirdly, um, our cities are in a bad shape. That itself is an important enabling condition for us to actually even talk about the leapfrogging that smart cities can give us. Um, and the application of technology is uh, much easier because Indian society accepts the presence of technology in, it li in its lives. All right, so people at the center of the mission. Uh, Dheeraj Kali, would you agree on two things? One, that technology in India's uh, quest to have hundred smart cities will play a leapfrogging role, can play a leapfrogging role, and how is that? And number two, smart cities is not just about technology, it's a lot to do with citizen outcomes that we achieve. Before saying anything else, I would say that the onus is on, first of all, the state government's special purpose vehicles to implement the smart cities in letter and spirit. That's so important. I think smart city... Uh, is a connected city. How do you realize, how do we realize a, a connected city? Technology is the key. And how do we pick up the right kind of technologies? And please mind, when I say that we are not trying to flood the cities with the assets, technology assets, it has to be carefully picked up, carefully chosen. And that is where it is so important that with the smart city plan, is made, when the vision for the city is made, you have to uh, pick up the right kind of uh, uh, technology solutions based on what are the 
you know what is the character of the city what are the pain areas areas of the city where the city wants to go in 5 years 10 years and 15 years mr shrinivas you lnt has been in in india's epc business forever since independence right and you know how the game is plays played we know that we've got so many things not right so so is there a danger uh, of smart cities also going that way when it comes to both technology and other functions that you would uh, you would probably bid for there is definitely a change in the perception it's no longer always l1 game it's not it's not always like at least about you know 7 out of 10 i can tell you they are going on a t1 l1 kind of a model which means 60 to 70% is given for uh, technology or the way you present the background everything and balance 30 40% is given for uh, commercial so that way there has been a change in fact uh, we are currently doing about four smart cities and in most of the places i can tell you the customer is ultimately asking for perfect quality because one of the important things which i would like to say here all the contracts are with five years kind of wind them with a very clear service level agreements so unless they take the right kind of agency they won't be able to fulfill that Cisco has been very engaged with India. Just so tell me, what are the sets of challenges that you are aware of, and will keep in mind before any technology deployment or solution deployment? What are your impressions about this? I think anything will actually, you know, go through what we call as a web scale. The adoption is, you know, almost instantaneous. It becomes actually a viral rage to use an internet term. Uh, everybody wants to actually experience it and so on. So, which which means that you know, it's so important for us to actually, therefore. build scale ability which means when we are designing the solution it's important for us to actually not go for something that appears to do the job today but something that can actually sustain so the sustainability element is actually built into the solution so that's one of the things that we are actually making uh, tr- uh, trying to do to ensure that you know we don't have a point of uh, failure when the scale really happens because you got a perfect storm happening here you got actually you know very savvy uh, you know citizen base you got actually scale that is really really large you also have infrastructure that's just shaping up all of this creates the perfect storm if you are able to maneuver this storm i think you'll be able to you know maneuver any condition anywhere i would say that all of this uh, all the internet of things uh, devices coming onto the network network then moving into the application stage and getting applied to either energy efficiency waste management all of that needs great connectivity and that will probably remain one big challenge when you're t- talking about india's technology applications to its smart city ambitions i think the fundamental uh, issue around all of this is that is are our cities with all of this infrastructure coming in geared with accessibility and connectivity to actually operate seamlessly a very simplistically putting you don't want to have call drops while uh, you know all this connectivity a uh, business is happening and uh, also you have to have a highly trained civic and municipal force to really implement all of this mm-hmm. but coming back to connectivity and telecom i think that's one area that that requires definitely um, a, fo- a a key focus because making sure that broadband is uh, the the uh, broadband tele density or penetration is significantly higher at least double treble of what it is currently and also fiber how do we utilize fiber to these cities and not depend only on uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know the, the the wireless services and interconnectivity between telecom towers on microwave because that's not going to be able to handle this kind of data Uh, going forward uh, samir you've heard all the conversations here uh, could you take us through any global examples of of a city which is probably close in its ethos as we are in india right now at the starting point and say what are some of the learnings that we could derive and then also implement i was reflecting back on similar conversations i've had with uh, cities across the world because my team's charter is pretty global and the good news is this could be a conversation in any part of the world Uh, some of the cities that i would say have done this job pretty well in terms of taking a step back and looking at the big picture and having a data policy having a standards based approach thinking about security prioritizing the specific use cases their citizens are clamoring for uh, i think singapore has done a fantastic job taking that step back and engaging different parts of the government as well as the private sector to take the that effort forward 
even over there, their prime minister recently made, had a sort of a public statement where he was urging every part of the government to go faster. Uh, within U.S., we are engaged with the city of San Diego. Uh, by the end of this year, you'll see thousands of smart street lights with things like cameras and mic arrays, doing everything from smart parking to pedestrian detection to license plate tracking to even gunshot detection. So much that technology can do in our endeavor to rejuvenate our cities. Do you prioritize each of these and say, all right, this is a place or a plane where larger technology innovations are needed? You know, it's, this is a very uh, valid question in terms of how do you prioritize and, and do you really prioritize? So I think, um, uh, you know, the short answer of this is that I think while implementing technology or solutions, we should have a much larger horizon in terms of putting in things which are much wider. But while, while executing, you may want to take an approach to prioritize uh, certain areas because you need a larger infrastructure, training, a whole lot of uh, modus operandi around data will there. do that job. Exactly. You know, if you can mine data and you can also bring standards. All right, I think we've run out of time completely. I could go on with this discussion because really the inputs have been so fabulous from all the panelists. This is a topic which is so interesting as, as a journalist and as an audience and as stakeholders that we could probably have another date on the topic very soon again. Thank you very much for joining me. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.